Little Rascals, originally known as Our Gang, ran for 23 years in movie theaters and went from the silent movie era right through the coming of sound. The first film you're going to see was a pioneering effort from the earliest days of talking pictures. It was made in 1929, and it's called Railroadin'. Many actors who'd been popular in silent movies saw their careers ruined because they couldn't speak well or their voices didn't seem to match their personalities. None of this seemed to bother the kids in our gang. Some filmmakers felt hampered by sound, fearful that they couldn't move the new bulkier camera or hide the microphone, which had to be invisible to the audience. Or worse, that moving the camera and microphone might make noise. This had never been an issue in silent films. While big-time feature filmmakers were grappling with these problems and others, the folks at the humble Hal Roach Comedy Studio simply forged ahead, and after a few false starts, went right ahead making wonderful slapstick comedies with sound as a bonus, not an obstacle. Railroadin' was the second all-talking film to feature The Little Rascals. And not only does it show the kids adjusting quite nicely to dialogue, but also shows off the skill of the behind-the-scenes team, with a dazzling display of filmmaking on natural locations with moving camera work. So much for those stories you read about cameras being nailed down in place and actors not being able to move when talkies came along. Our next two films show just how polished and professional the entire team became by the late 1930s. Both Roman Holiday and Three Men in a Tub are slick, fast-paced one-reel shorts from the period when the gang consisted of Spanky, Alfalfa, Darla, Buckwheat, and Porky. Three Men in a Tub is also a perfect showcase for the insufferable Waldo. Finally, we turn back the clock to the waning days of silent movies to see the late 20s rascals in action in a very funny outing called Cat, Dog, and Company. You'll recognize many of the kids from this 1929 short made just months before Railroadin'. You won't hear the kids' voices, but you'll see how silent comedy spoke a universal language of laughter.
Up you come. Right on up here. Ah. Right on. Up. Hurry up. Come on. Up, please. Up, please. Up, please. Up, please. Up, please. Up, please. Up, What are you trying to do? Popping off? Oiling your daddy, huh? No. What I want to know is what we got for lunch. Oh, a great lunch today. We had triple sandwiches. Ah, that's a banquet, huh? Yes. <laughs> you bet. See, Pop, how do you run this thing? Oh, look, son. See? Leave the bike. Yes. Pull her out. Away we go. Yes. Have it, boy. Yep. Pull it out. Do you know that I think I was wrong in letting those kids on that engine? I think you were too, Otto. From now on, I'm going to keep you kids out of these yards. Supposing that one of you got your foot caught in a switch. Or supposing that you kids were playing on that engine. And someone started it. And it ran away. Hey, Joe. Get off that engine. Come here. Well, how do you run this thing? Well, you pull that thing up there, but I don't know how to stop it. Yeah, you're scared. No, I'm not. Well, then do, do something. Look. Look who's Joe. Ah, I got this. Time to 
fucking pendrive. <laughs> no, no. I can run a pendrive and run it for a thousand miles a second. Watch me. Come here. Come here. I'm all right. You're going to have a good ride. Now watch me run this pendrive. Watch. <laughs>
From above. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> now, if that brakeman hadn't got to that switch in time, you would have all been killed. Now, that's what could happen to you if a crazy man started that engine and it ran away. Gosh, he popped. I'll never play on the engine again as long as I live. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, look! Marina went to sleep. She didn't hear what you said. We were trying to stop it. Stop ring war. The reward is right! 
been at school all weekend today when we should be relaxing. We've got to do this. Yeah, we're just a couple of nursemaids. <laughs> all right, Junior. <laughs> Ever since he came into my life, I've had nothing but trouble. Trouble? Well, you haven't got half the trouble I've got. Take a look. How can a fellow with my look have brothers with faces like them? Ah. There they go again. Ah. All right, wait a minute. <laughs> you know we're being lots of our childhood. You're darn right. Someday I'm going to run away from home and teach my mother a lesson. Me too. I'm just waiting for one more thing to happen. Me too. Thank you. What do you want now? Alfalfa's going to have to take dancing lessons. And so are you. Mom just said so. Dancing, dancing lessons? That shows. I'm leaving home. Are you with me? You can count on me 10%. Sure made me hungry. Me too. I feel like I could eat a horse. Thank you, send me it. Boy, but don't they look good? I wish we had a dime so we could get some. Did you see what I saw? Yeah, of course, Peter. What are you going to do? You'll find out. Me to the toy. Uh, pardon me, lady, but can we have some cookies for our dog? He's hungry. Well, I haven't any cookies left, but I'll get him something better. Oh, that'll be 12. Thanks. Come on, Barky. Here's something extra special. Thanks a lot, lady. That's all right, sonny. I bet the cream pots. Oh, I hope so, too. Dog biscuits. Have one. Thanks. That's our dog, all right. I wonder what they're up to now. I don't know, but as constable of Jamesville, it is my duty to investigate. Now, you just leave everything to me. Hey, what did I do to the dog? He owns me. It's no use, you're wasting your time. Oh, no, we not. Come on, Bubby. Come on, Bubby. Come on, Bubby. Let him alone, they'll find out. Howdy, boys. What can I do for you? I dog is hungry. You give me something to eat? Sure. Would your dog like this? And how? Thanks. He's pretty big. Do you see anything else he'd like? Not get pie. Pie? <laughs> the dog likes pie. <clears throat> Any particular flavor? Apple. Oh, apple. Oh, good. Yeah. Anything else? And big steak. <laughs> I told Tame Puffs. And two more Tame Puffs. Anything else? And some chewing gum. Chewing gum? Not chewing gum, it's only for a flash. Well, uh... Don't you think that that's about enough? That's enough, Barky? Plus, that's enough. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. This dog biscuit isn't doing my teeth a bit of good. Mine neither. I wonder how much cement they put in. I don't know, but I pity buckwheat and porky when they have to eat it. Me too. Oh, Bella. Hello. 
first. Come on, Mom. There's so, so many cakes and pies in my whole life. Well, will live like cakes. Pies for breakfast and cream puffs for lunch and cakes for supper time. Boy, what a life. How about some cake? Yeah, I have you there. Thanks. <laughs> Say, I know it won't shoot, but it'll scare them plenty. Now then, you keep on working. I'll be back as soon as I can. Well, let's get going and save the pie for later. It's a good idea. Just a minute, young fellows. Which one of you is going to pay for that food? Well, I haven't got any money. Neither have I. Then you're under arrest, every one of you. Now, come on, come on, get in the store here. Get in there now. I've got the goods on you this time. Deserting, dog napping, false pretenses, haters, corpus. Sit down and strike them. Five counts of frequency. Keep right on working until I return. <clears throat>
not worried. I'm mad. Maybe she won't come to the picnic. Maybe. That's just why I'm mad. Every time I want to take her out, she's always got to stay home and take care of the baby. It's enough to run a man's appetite. Yeah. Maybe she's got another fella. She ain't neither. No. She's my girl. Yeah. Why, she's so proud of me that she wouldn't even look at another man. She's, she... Waldo, wouldn't you love some chocolate? I'd be delighted. No, she wouldn't even look at another fella. No. After all I've done for, she let me down for a man with a yacht. A speed man. Oh, me. Don't let it get you, pal. You'll win her back. Do you think so? Sure, it's a cinch. How? I'll tell you. You give that guy some uh, com com competition. Why, I wouldn't give that guy anything. I got an idea. Come here, you kids. Now, we're going to fix that, Waldo. Come on, listen. That's smart Alec Waldo and make it snap. All right. Okay. Sit up, Bessie, sit up. Sit up, Bessie, sit up. Oh, Waldo, your boat is beautiful. She's a very trim craft. Oh, is it a she? Things of beauty, grace and speed are usually referred to in the feminine gender. Be a horse. That's Bessie. Come on, Forky. I got an important message for you. And pray, what is the message? Our balcony is. Why is old manger our baffle? He builds terrible. I don't care if he does. If you think your boat is so good, we'll challenge you to race tomorrow for the championship of Toluca Lake. Our father's just trying to act smart, Waldo. He hasn't even got a boat. Yes, he has. The advice for you. Well, tell our father I'm not interested in his surprises. Boat late. In regard to this note, my good man, your illiterate friend conveys the idea of competing with me in a contest of speed by water. Please convey my compliments to Alfalfa and inform him that if he will abide by the rules of the Amateur Yachting Association and race a craft seven feet WL, two foot beam, six inch draft, maximum speed four knots, far specified in Lloyd's Book of Yacht Racing Regulations, and any and all where as's and wherefores in the recognized British Cruiser Racing Code, I will accept his impertinent challenge with a thorough understanding. The contest ends when one contestant has successfully negotiated one lap around the lake. Is that clear? Yes, sir. That's there. Only what I don't tell Al Balfour. <laughs> Look at 
right, good man. Well said, don't you think? Out! Are you ready, Below? Okay, let her go. One, two, three. Thank you. 